Good time of day, guys! My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 6, Sumihoroboshi. Last episode, Rena uh, confided some of the information she found out through Takano's scrapbooks in Keiichi, and Keiichi was having a hard time believing some of it until he saw a truck that was supposedly following her, yada yada. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine the chapter is about to get a lot weirder, too, so that's exciting. And if I sound somewhat uh, groggy, that's because I just woke up from an hour long nap and it was nice, so. Yeah. <laughs> I should be better and, like, give it, give it five, ten minutes, so. Yeah. I should apologize, Rena. I don't think I believed you. I'm really sorry about that. On the phone, I'm guessing? It's okay, Keiichi Kun. I'm just glad we didn't get caught. Who are they? Are they pawns of those religious fanatics who are trying to revive the cult of Oyashiro-sama? I think they don't realize that they're pawns, but I'm sure the masterminds are using them as such. They must be the ones who have been pulling strings behind the scenes ever since the dam conflict. I heard that people working for the Sonazaki family did something similar during the dam conflict itself. Yes. Everyone knows that. Oishi-san told me that there was a kidnapping incident during the dam conflict. The case hasn't been disclosed to the public, but anyway, someone kidnapped the grandson of the Minister of Construction and coerced the Minister into promising to put a halt to the dam construction. The grandson of the Minister was kidnapped? Hey, I've never heard about that before! The Minister submitted to their demands and they made a deal behind the scenes. That's why the incident never went public. Oishi-san only knows about it because he was in charge of the case. Hmm, okay. And? According to Oishi-san, between kidnapping the minister's grandson and blackmailing him, their tactics were frighteningly advanced. The police know that the Sonozaki family gave orders to the kidnappers, but the case still remains unsolved. At that time, the head of the Sonozaki family, Oreo, had announced a plan to fight against the dam project by force. She even formed a special attack corps using the Yakuza group that's under the Sonozaki family's command. She was very serious about this plan to put the Ministry of Construction down by brute force if she couldn't stop the construction. Everybody knows that the Sonozaki family had tried to stop the dam project even if it meant breaking the law. So I wasn't so surprised to hear that she had a dangerous plan like that. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Mion who came up with the idea. The plan sounded just like her. In the end, the plan ended up as nothing more than that. But the Special Attack Corps actually did undergo training, and very high-level training at that. Oishi had uncovered the information right after the dam conflict ended. At the time, Oreo even said that if the village was going to be submerged, all members of the Onigafuchi Guardians would choose to stay in their houses and drown. So because Oreo was behind those things, I couldn't just laugh off the idea of an armed assault on the Ministry of Construction. According to the information Oishi seized, she planned a suicide mission as a last resort when the dam conflict started to heat up, in case the resistance wasn't successful. She had actually obtained weapons and put people through training for the sake of that plan. The Special Attack Corps were flown to America, having received a huge amount of money from Oreo for the operation. In the southern desert of the United States, some retired military soldiers gave them highly professional training. While the plan was never carried out, the Special Attack Corps became a death squad under the direct control of Oreo after they came back from America. They were involved in many unsolved terrorist incidents, and they succeeded in kidnapping the grandson of the minister as well. I don't know, this, this is a bit ridiculous. <laughs> it sounds like it's from a movie or something. Do you remember how Mii-chan said that she could do anything, from flying helicopters to using wireless radios? It's actually all true. It seems like Mii-chan joined in their training. So that was all true? Well, let's put that aside for now. Uh, my dog's barking at air. She does that. Anyway, you have to at least believe that the Death Squad actually exists in Hinamizawa, and they're capable of kidnapping the grandson of a government minister. I didn't take a close look at the foreman in the white van today, 
but thinking about it, they did look professional in a way. They were pretending to just be taking a break, but I could tell they were tense the whole time. So, are they really trying to kill you? I don't think so. If they really wanted to kill me, I'd be dead already. So, what do they want? Are they after Takano-san's scrapbooks? Like you saw yourself, the group is very cautious. Unless we show them an opening, they won't resor resort to force. If they were to type to use force outright, they could have attacked me in my sleep. They haven't done that yet, so that must mean they're taking it cautiously. They're probably not sure that I have the scrapbooks. They killed Mio-san and tried to dispose of them, but they found out that the most important ones were missing. They thought she gave them to someone because she knew her life was in danger. Now they think I'm the one who has them, but they're not sure, so they can't resort to violence. Rena, it sounds like you're playing a dangerous game. Yeah, I'm a bit scared, but they won't be able to erase me so easily. After all, I'm cooperating with Oishi-san. I've been frequently contacting him in case something happens. What did he say about them? He said he'd keep an eye on the Sonozaki family so that he could catch them right away if they were working behind the scenes. Did you tell him about the scrapbooks? No, I didn't. I think you should. He's an officer. I'm sure the police will help you. Keiichi-kun, I can't even tell you the secret of this village because I'm not sure you would even believe me. I don't think Oishi-san would believe me if I told him any of this. Rana, let's not make it more confusing than it already is. Just tell me, what is it? What's written in the scrapbooks? What's the secret that killed Mio-san? Simply put, if the things written in the scrapbooks are true, the god they worship will be dethroned. Their god? Dethroned? Yes. The sanctity of Oishiro-sama will be lost. That's why they want to conceal the truth. They want to resurrect people's belief in Oishiro-sama. Rana, can you explain it... Uh, a little more simply than that? I'm confused. In other words, Oishiro-sama isn't a god. He isn't? I had no idea what she read that made her so certain. But whatever it was, it'd be sacrilegious for people who believe so strongly in Oishiro-sama. There are many teachings of Oyashiro-sama, but the essence is as follows. Don't leave the village, and don't let anybody into the village. One could even say the rest of his teachings were developed to maintain those two fundamentals. It really wasn't until later on that they added aspects like love your neighbor, viewing him as a god of marriage and domestic pro prosperity. In other words, Oyashiro-sama existed solely to stop the villagers from going outside the village. Oyashiro-sama doesn't bless the villagers or protect them from disasters. The people believe that Oyashiro-sama does all that for them, but the truth is that the people abused his name for that purpose, generation after generation, and nothing more than that. Hmm. Why did Oyashiro-sama descend in the first place? Because demons came out of Onigafuchi Swamp and attacked people. In fact, that was the wrong interpretation. Demons didn't come out of the swamp and attack people. People became demons and attacked others when they were possessed by whatever came out of the swamp. Whatever came out of the swamp? What do you mean by that? Whatever came out of the swamp possessed people, crawled into their blood, controlled them, and turned them into demons. People had no resistance against whatever it was that came out of the swamp. They became demons, attacked the other villagers, and turned them into demons as well. Oh. That's right. It was a weird infectious disease that broke out from the swamp. It made the infected people go out of control. The villagers saw this disease and explained it like so. Evil demons came out from the bottom of the swamp, possessed people, and turned them into demons as well. That is the truth of the story of the demons that came out of Onigafuchi Swamp. It actually explains the legend. So, was Oyashiro-sama... A doctor who came from a foreign country? Yes, that's uh, not exactly correct, but he was something like that. He came to Onigafuchi and he treated the infectious disease, but he couldn't cure it for good. Okay. <laughs> All his treatment could do was reduce the symptoms of the infection. Villagers could have their symptoms suppressed, but there was no way to kill the parasites that had infested them. 
After a while, the village was divided into two groups. One group was made up of the people who were already infected, and the other consisted of the people who weren't. Without a cure for the disease, the uninfected looked down on the people who could only suppress their violent symptoms. They even talked about drowning them in the swamp. But they knew killing the infected people wouldn't solve the problem. The parasites came out of their water sources, including Onigafuchi Swamp. They couldn't fill them all in, for if they did that, they would lose their access to drinking water. They could have chosen to leave the village, but that was hard for them, for that was the location of their ancestors' graves. Under the power of Oyashiro-sama, infected people could live without showing symptoms. So, both those who were infected and those who weren't decided to live together equally and to coexist with the parasite. Oyashiro-sama was impressed by the villagers' decision. He decided to stay there and continue tr to treat them. That's the true identity of Oyashiro-sama, the benefactor who stayed in the village to protect the lives of both human and demon. That's right, and Oyashiro-sama made rules in order to ensure the symptoms of the infected people would remain suppressed. The rules were to never leave the village and to never let anybody into the village. I understand why he didn't want to let anybody new into the village. It was to prevent the parasite from infecting anyone else. But I don't understand why he didn't want people to leave. It seems like the parasite can only live in Hinamizawa because of the climate here. It causes an outbreak of the symptoms in order to prevent the host from leaving the village when they try. That reaction is the truth behind the curse of Oyashiro-sama. The strongest symptoms of the infectious disease were violence and delirium. The infected people acted just like demons, and the impact of seeing them in the throes of the disease was strong enough to make others describe them as such. They couldn't even let people leave who had just come to the village. If they had left, if they had left after being infected, they might go crazy in a faraway land, turn into a vicious demon, and cause a disaster. Infected people were never allowed to leave. When an infected person left the village, they brought him back by any means necessary. That was what it really meant to be demoned away. Wait a second, Rena. That means everybody in this village, including you and I, are infected. But nothing happens when we leave Hinamizawa. In fact, many villagers move far away after getting married or something. I've never heard of any villagers who went crazy and turned into demons after they left Hinamizawa. You're right. That's because things went as Oyashiro-sama thought they would. Do you understand? He isolated the village for a long time in order to weaken the power of the parasite. Hosts are very important for parasites. If something happens to the host, the parasites that live in the host have to share the same fate. In other words, if the host went crazy and attacked people, the host would be captured and killed, which means that the parasites would die with the host, too. I see. You're talking about natural selection! Good thinking, Keiichi-kun! That's exactly right! As a result of living in this village under such strict rules for a long time, people who were hypersensor- Yeah, hypersensitive, yeah, I'm, that's how you say the word. People who were hypersensitive to the parasite went crazy and got killed. The strong parasites that made the infected people go crazy were also killed off due to the host's violent behaviors. As a result, only the parasites that acted nice to people lived on. And that's the explanation behind the mix of human and demon blood that's written in the legend of Oyashiro-sama. So, that means the parasite is almost harmless now. Yes, according to Mio-san's scrapbooks, there are actually many people who are infected by harmless parasites. It depends on the local food culture, for example. About 80% of the people who live in a country where meat is a staple food are infected by parasites. But because the parasites coexist with humans without doing any harm to them, nobody notices them, treats them, or tries to get rid of them. I see. Is that technically true? Like, <laughs> that sounds a bit ridiculous. Although that's probably the point, come to think of it. In olden times, Watanagashi was called Harawatanagashi, Harawata meaning guts. It's said that the people back then used to eat the guts of infected people who went crazy. It sounds awful, but it was something they had to do. Eating the infected people? Are you talking about a vaccine? 
<laughs> You're very smart, Keiichi-kun. Mio-san also interpreted it just like you did. In the legend, it says people cut open and ate the infected ones alive. But it actually wasn't anything gross like that. They did it in a scientific way. They created a vaccine from the infected people who died from the extremely strong parasites. And that helped the uninfected villagers boost their immune system. Is that how vaccines work? <laughs> I'm not smart with medical stuff, so I have no idea. Who was Oyashiro-sama? A scientist? He must have been from a very advanced country. Was he German? Is the true identity of Oyashiro-sama a foreign doctor who survived a shipwreck? I think that'd be the most likely answer. He wasn't German, but he was a doctor of some sort. It's kind of interesting to reveal the truth behind old legends. <laughs> I don't think that Rena's story is too crazy to be true anymore. It still sounds crazy, of course, but I've never heard any theories that explain the legend of this village better than this one. I'm infected by the parasite too, right? I feel itchy all over now. A person is like a universe. We have countless numbers of bacteria in our bodies. Some of those bacteria are, in are essential to us staying alive. Oh, like bacteria and yogurt, right? I see. This is also what Mio-san wrote in her scrapbooks. You know, termites, right? They eat blood. But they actually can't digest it themselves. They have unique bacteria that decomposes the wood fibers. As a result, termites can absorb what they eat. That's just one example of a species coexisting with parasites. Okay, so they're talking about... Uh, th the phrase isn't parasitism, though. I, I remember learning about this shit in middle school. It's stuff like uh, manta rays and uh, whatever the little fish is that lives on the bottom of them. Which Mantine and Remoraid were based off of <laughs> the Pokemon. I don't remember what they're called or what the pro process is called. Um... I could probably find it out if I just Google mutual parasitism. Um, is it commensalism? Uh, it might just straight up be mutualism. Yeah, that sounds about right. Mutualism. So, yeah, mutual parasitism is essentially what it is. Because it ceases to be parasitism if the parasite's not feeding off of the host. I didn't know that. When I hear the word parasites, I feel creeped out almost instinctively. But now I know some of them aren't so bad to us. So the weird infectious disease that broke out from Onigafuchi Swamp has been exterminated by now. Well, I shouldn't say exterminated. I should say it's harmless now. I thought it was a crazy story at first. But now I feel like I just saw the trick behind some crazy kind of magic. It's interesting. It is to us. But for the cult of Oyashiro-sama, this must be a very annoying theory. Of course. If Takano-san's theory is correct, Oyashiro-sama isn't a god. And the punishment by that god, namely the curse of Oyashiro-sama that people have been so afraid of, will turn out to have just been the symptoms of an infectious disease. I see. That's what dethroning god would mean. So, if the pathogen of this infectious disease was identified and announced to the public, the power of Oyashiro-sama would be completely lost. Oh, we're on her side. We're in her perspective now. And her text is now Salmon Red. That's... that's great. <laughs> that's right. That's what they're afraid of. Mio-san was going to identify the pathogen. And for that, she was killed. So that must mean she identified it. Maybe she did. But she's gone, and she didn't say anything about that in her scrapbooks. That's the only reason I can think of, though. But it's the end of the 20th century. I'm sure the villagers have been examined by a lot of different medical institutions by now, right? I've never heard about anyone discovering a weird parasite like that. I know. It's true that the pathogen hasn't been found yet. But in fact, there is evidence that there is some kind of parasite involved. What? Really? When a parasite enters a human body, that body's immune system cells, uh, eosinophils and macrophages try to kill the parasite. They secrete an antibody called immunoglobulin E, IgE. 
The most common way of checking if a person is infected by a pathogen is to look at the levels of, it, of this secretion. According to Takano's research, people from Hinamizawa have a very high level of IgE in their blood. That's not all. They also have obvious symptoms of being infected by parasites. They don't have any allergies. Wow, okay, that's, that's a thing? Eh, okay. IgE stimulates mast cells, and they secrete histamines and serotonin as a result. These cause an allergic reaction. That allergic reaction isn't pleasant for humans, but it's necessary for the body to kill the pathogen. But the parasites don't want to be killed, of course, so they secrete substances that counteract IgE. As a result, IgE stops stimulating the receptors of the mast cells, which stops secreting the chemical compounds. As a result, the antigen-antibody reaction, namely the allergic reaction, doesn't occur. In other words, a human body that was infected by a parasite secretes a high level of IgE, but doesn't display allergic reactions. For your information, a human body that's infected by a parasite doesn't suffer from hay fever. You get hay fever due to your body secreting a large amount of IgE because it's mistaken pollen for a parasitic invasion. As a result, a large amount of stimulants like histamine will be secreted, but your body can't contain the parasite that it's attempting to kill. That's why your body continues to secrete IgE. As a result, the stimulants keep causing allergic reactions. That's how hay fever works. If you have a parasite in your body, it'll deactivate your IgE and suppress the secretion of stimulants. As a result, you don't have an allergic reaction. In other words, there's no hay fever in Hinamizawa, and you can cure your hay fever by moving here. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> so we haven't been able to identify the pathogen, but there's no question about its existence. Yes, that's right. If that's true, the scrapbooks are a big threat to the believers in Oyashiro-sama. They don't identify the pathogen, but they clearly pr prove its existence. Yeah. It poses a big enough danger to them to make them think it's worth killing Mio-san. This really is a scary secret. I believe it because you took the time to explain it to me, but if you had skipped the details and told me only the conclusion, it really would have sounded too crazy to believe. I told you! I couldn't believe it at first either, so I thought you definitely wouldn't. So, what's important right now is that there's a dangerous organization acting in the shadows to try and cover up the truth, right? Yes, that's the most important thing. The fanatics who want to revive the sanctity of the god they worship. Reviving the majesty of their god means reviving the power of that god. And the power of their god is the infectious disease. This infectious disease can't spread nationwide, unlike other infectious diseases. So from now on, I'm going to start calling it an endemic disease. Is endemic the step below uh, epidemic? That fits better, since it only affects this region. Anyway, the endemic disease of current-day Hinamizawa is different from the one of old times. It's been through a process of natural selection, and it's harmless now. In other words, it doesn't do any harm to human bodies. That harm was once interpreted as a curse. A curse is the power of a god. So, a harmless endemic disease means that the god is powerless. That means the only way to regain the majesty of that god is to revive the curse. In other words, they want to bring back the primitive endemic disease, namely the harmful, strong version of the parasite. Wait a second! These fanatics want to deny the fact that their god was actually a parasite, but you're saying that they're researching the parasite. That's contradictory, isn't it? I know it is. I think that this research is a secret that only the head of the fanatics is aware of. From the outside, they look like they're praising their god, but they actually understand it's true identity, and they're trying to revive its supernatural power with their own hands. I get it now. Oh my god, this is getting crazier and crazier. It didn't say in the scrapbooks, but I'm suspicious of the clinic the manager owns. The Eerie Clinic? Why? The facility is too big and fancy for Hinamizawa. Mio-san was working there, the manager might be a bacteriologist the Sonozaki family recruited. It can't be. I think Mio-san was murdered because she knew too much. 
The reason why the manager hasn't been murdered yet is because he's working for the fanatics in the first place. And he's researching the primitive form of the endemic disease. It's hard to believe that the coach we know is capable of doing things like that. I'm sorry. He might be totally irrelevant. It's just a wild guess. But someone is doing the research somewhere. That much is certain. And after five years, the research has finally been completed. The first case was this dismemberment murder by the damn construction workers. Their quarrel had turned into a lynching. They might have had the primitive infectious disease, and the symptoms, the aggression and delirium, might have kicked in. The victims of the second year were Santico's parents. There were no witnesses, so the whole event is a mystery. But there's a theory that someone might have pushed them over the cliff, since the fence of the observation deck that they fell from was quite sturdy. What if one of them was infected by the primitive parasite? He or she might have become violent and pushed the other over the cliff. The Shinto priest died from a disease and his wife drowned herself in the third year. He might have died of shock because of a hypersensitive, hypersensitive reaction to the infection. His wife might have gone crazy and committed suicide when one of the symptoms, delirium, kicked in. In the fourth year, Satoshi Hojo's aunt was beaten to death, probably by Satoshi himself. Everybody who knew Satoshi-kun remembers how he changed at that time. He showed signs of being both aggressive and delirious. In the fifth year, for the first time in five years, the victim experienced the maggot disease described in the old scroll of the Frude Shrine. The reason behind that is unclear, but the stronger primitive parasite could have given its victims a delusion of maggots. This means that they finally managed to duplicate the curse of Oyashiro-sama, after five years of research. I'll admit so far, you're making it sound reasonable enough, Rena, but it's gonna go haywire, isn't it? <laughs> Tomatake-san is the victim of the fifth year. He died in an extremely abnormal way, and I'm the only one who understands his death because I experienced the same thing. He kept clawing at his throat to get rid of the maggots, and died as a result. With all that explained, I finally understand the maggot disease I experienced in Ibaraki. I left Hinamizawa, and it made the parasite in me uncomfortable. As a result, it tried to resist, even though it wasn't very strong, and it tried to make me homesick. But with my parents' divorce, I grew mentally unbalanced, and I completely lost the power to resist for a period of time. The parasite was weak and harmless, but my mental instability allowed it to worsen my symptoms dramatically. As a result, I went crazy and became violent. The delusion of Oyashiro-sama appearing to me in the bathroom was probably the terminal phase of my delirium. I created the supernatural existence, Oyashiro-sama, that I was instilled with when I was little. Then I persuaded myself to go back to Hinamizawa based on that delusion. Some of the transcendents of Onigafuchi must have had the same kind of experience. They must have passed their experiences down as the acts of a god. I remember I once saw on TV that the indigenous people in South America used some kind of natural drug in order to have a mystical experience, and that they called it a ritual to communicate with their gods. So, what the fanatics are trying to do is spread the primitive parasites throughout Hinamizawa! I think that's their goal. But I don't think they'll do that without letting people know about it. Religions need ceremonies. So if they created what they wanted to create, and if they decided to spread it, I think they'd name it the Day of Oyashiro-sama's Revival or something, and they'd perform some kind of ceremony. It would be in celebration of the revival of Oyashiro-sama. That's a bad thing, isn't it? I think you can say that because they're trying to spread a very dangerous pathogen. Hey, isn't that bioterrorism? Jeez, this is very bad! They used it on Tomotake-san, confirming that they succeeded in duplicating the curse of Oyashiro-sama. So that day of revival might be really soon. I don't know. It could happen in a few days, or it might take a year. This is way out of your league, Rena. This is a very serious conspiracy. There's nothing we alone can do to stop them. We have to report it to the police. Do you think they will believe us? It's their choice whether to believe us or not. No matter what, we have to tell them! Keiichi-kun, telling Oishi-san about all this means telling him that I have the scrapbooks. 
Do you think that'd be a problem? Oishi-san came to me after Mio-san was murdered. When they killed Mio-san, they found out that her scrapbooks were missing. They also know that she met me at the library a few days ago. No way. You mean... Yes. Oishi-san could be one of them. It's possible that Oishi-san thinks I have the scrapbooks and he might be trying to find out. In fact, he looked very suspicious, and it seemed to me that he didn't really tell me everything he knew. He only told me things to make me suspicious of the Sonozaki family. He could have just been trying to look like he was on my side and that he's actually their minion. But the police are our only hope! Keiichi-kun, you know about the case of the fourth year, don't you? Satoko-chan's aunt was murdered. I believe Satoshi-kun did it, but the police fingered a drug addict as the murderer. What do you think about that? Some of the fanatics are with the police. And they fabricated the murderer? It's the same with the autopsy of the Shinto priest, who they claim died from disease, and the inspection of the accident site where the Hojo couple died. If the police are on their side, it opens the door to many perfect crimes. The three families have been maintaining pressure on the police since the dam conflict. You've heard from Michan that they also have considerable power over many organizations in Okinomiya, right? Yes, I have. It's not only Mion who told me that. Many people did. They told me the Sonozaki family holds influence over the whole city. That's right. You can't necessarily trust the police around here. Run up, please! I want to make one thing clear before we go on. Are the Sonozaki family the masterminds behind all this? Does that mean Mion is involved too? Please, tell me! I don't know if Michan or Rika-chan are directly involved or not. All I can say for sure is that the fanatics have the power to control the nerve centers of all the three families, including the most powerful family of all, the Sonozakis. My dog is barking like crazy again. I'm not sure if the fanatics are controlling the three families, or if the three families are the fanatics themselves. As long as we're not sure about their involvement, it's better for us to be extra careful around them. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I'm not saying I don't trust Michan. She's usually very reliable, and I'd ask her for help with any problem, but not this one. This one is a little different. I don't know if you've seen it before, but although Michan jokes around when she's with us, she can be a very cold person when she's acting as the successor of the Sonozaki family. Plus, even if she wasn't involved, we would put her in danger if we told her about this. If she was on our side, that'd be really encouraging. I think we should tell her. No, we shouldn't! We shouldn't tell her until we confirm she's not one of them. Sure, it'd be great if we could pull her to our side, but what if we couldn't? So, how are we going to fight against them? Well, this is a battle we don't stand a chance of winning to begin with. That's why I didn't want to get you involved. Damn it! Takano-san left us a big parting gift, didn't she? But because of that, we know about the conspiracy. I believe this is her will. Two kids challenging the mastermind who controls the village. This is going to be tough. Ordinary methods won't work. But, Keiichi-kun, I'm glad to have you on my side. We can talk about it and plan things together. Of course. I've always been on your side, and I'm your friend. I know. Thank you. You're very reassuring. Two heads are better than one. Yeah, I agree. We can come up with a plan for how we're going to fight against them together. I skipped school today because I wanted some time to read the scrapbooks again, but I'm going to school again tomorrow, and I'm going to act normal. They might sense something is wrong with me if I act different. You should do the same, Keiichi-kun. Please be careful with Michan. She's sometimes very perceptive. Okay, I'll act normal as if I know nothing. But damn, I'm a bit scared. A huge conspiracy is right around the corner, and it might already be counting down to zero. It's hard to act normal knowing that. Hmm. I don't think it's going to happen very soon. Like I said earlier, if they really are religious fanatics, they need a religious ceremony. They need the help of the whole village to hold something like that. I can't think of any event other than Watanagashi. So, you're saying that we have time at least until the next Watanagashi festival? I can't promise, but I just can't think of any other- any event other than that. Hmm. I think we have a year at least. But, I also feel like we don't, because of how they killed Mio-san. 
I might not know, but there might be a bigger religious event than Watanagashi. It might not be long until that day. On the day of Oyashiro-sama's revival, they're going to spread a dangerous parasite, and that day might be just around the corner. Nope. Oh. Reina! Are you still on the phone? Wrap it up soon, it's getting late. My father stuck his head out from the living room, telling me I need to hang up soon. I thought about telling him so many times. It's natural to think that your parents will be on your side no matter what. But I know just how weak he can get, so I shouldn't tell him. I don't think he'd believe me anyway. Even if I told him, he'd just tell me to call the police. It's better that I don't tell him. They might get close to my father to get me. If he didn't know anything about anything, including the scrapbooks, there'd be nothing to squeeze out of him to begin with. Understandable. God, going back to Keiichi's perspective makes his text look blue. Or is it blue? That's not blue, is it? No, that, that's white and it's my brain playing tricks on me. I'm sorry, Keiichi-kun. I have to go now. It's getting late. I'll see you at school. Okay, see you tomorrow. Be careful, okay? You're not an outsider anymore, or is this text blue? Because I'm looking at my calendar right now, to my left, which is white. Uh, no, that, no, that's white. Yeah, I'll be careful. I remembered a suspicious man in the white van and felt a chill run through my spine. They looked like villagers, but they weren't. They had the village accent, but they were just pretending. The more I thought about it, the more suspicious they became. It let me know that Rena and I aren't safe. If Rena is right, they're just suspicious of her, and they're not sure if she has the scrapbooks or not. But it's still creepy! Rena had probably experienced the same creepiness I felt when I saw the van several times up until now. She must sense the danger more than I do. However, the fact that they weren't attacking, that they were merely observing us, was disturbing. If they attacked her, she could have done something, like going to the police. But all they're doing is just watching her from a distance. She can't do anything about it. She can't talk to anybody about it. She probably just wants to stay in her house all day. But if she acted different, they might take it as proof that she has the scrapbooks. We have to t think about how to fight against them, without making it obvious. I told myself that there was no going back, and I put the phone down. Dun dun dun. How, how the fuck are we almost 40 minutes through this episode? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was a long discussion then, but it didn't feel that long. Huh. Alright. The next day, Rena came to school, acting normal like she said she would. She talked with Mion as cheerfully as she always did. And it made me wonder if the story she told me last night was a complete fabrication. That's because the story really was too ridiculously crazy to believe. This village has a very weird and rare endemic disease. And there are religious fanatics who want to use the disease to revive their weird cult. And they've been researching the pathogen of the endemic disease so they can spread it throughout the village. I was deeply influenced by Rena last night, and I believed everything she said. But thinking about it with a cool mind under the bright sunlight, it sounds too crazy to be true. The story Rena told me is based on Takano-san's crazy hand-me-down ideas. It's based entirely on her theories, which, though very feasible, have no evidence whatsoever. The fact that Takano-san was murdered lends credit to the theory. I'll give you that, but... I looked at Mion. She was fooling around with Rena. It's hard to believe that she's involved with some crazy conspiracy. Hey, are you listening, Kei-chan? What? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Wake up, sleepyhead. You need to get enough sleep or your brain stops working. Mion made fun of me for, make for reacting too slowly. It's almost impossible not to trust this bubbly, cheerful girl. I trust Mion. I trust my friends. I know she'd never have a hand in a crazy conspiracy like that. If she knew about it, she wouldn't be able to act this cheerfully. Rena told me not to tell Mion because she might be one of them. But it might be worth telling her without letting Rena know. Of course, 
there's at least a 1% chance that the conspiracy is true and that Mion is one of them. If so, I'd be doomed. But if I had to choose between believing the crazy conspiracy theory and trusting my friends, my answer would be obvious. I know that my friend, Mion, isn't a part of any conspiracy. She'd never be involved with something like that. Even if the conspiracy exists, I'm sure Mion will be on our side. So, whether or not it's true, it must be worth telling Mion about it. Okay. What's going on, Kei-chan? Why'd you call me out here? You told me not to tell anybody. You're not going to extort money from me, are you? Is that the first thing you think of when you're called out to the gymnasium storeroom? Oh, I know! You want to give me a love letter, don't you? People usually use the shoe locker for that, you know? We don't really do that in the city. A lot of guys hand over their love letters in person. Really? So, wait, you're, um... Are you kidding me? That's not why I called you here. I have to talk to you about something very important. I want you to listen without making fun of me. Uh, what is it? Do you know that there are people who want to revive the cult of Oyashiro-sama? Huh? Uh, what? Uh, what are you talking about? This, of course, was just my way of getting a feel for the situation. I wanted to see how she was going to react by getting straight to the point. But Mion really did look puzzled. People wouldn't normally react like this if someone pointed out their secrets out of the blue. They always panic, if only just a little, me playing Among Us. <laughs> Either Mion was a brilliant actress, or she really didn't have anything to do with the idea of reviving Oyashiro-sama. I decided to tell her everything. Mion, your family, the Sonozaki family, has a lot of influence in this region, including Hinamizawa, right? Do you think there's a possibility that they're working to revive the cult of Oyashiro-sama behind the scenes? Revive? Why? Uh, well, you know, people today don't worship Oyashiro-sama like the people in the old days did. So, people like fundamentalists might be trying to make people worship Oyashiro-sama in the what, same way as the people of Onigafuchi. What? Oh, wait a second. I have no idea what you're talking about. Are you sure? You really have no idea what I'm talking about? Of course I don't! It sounds like one of those popular novels that sold 5 million copies over in America. <laughs> Is this a reference? <laughs> I don't read very often. So, I don't know if that's actually a joke about an existing book. <laughs> Mion's reaction was very natural. It seemed impossible that she was pretending that she didn't know anything about it. But regardless, I continued. Well, there are people like that in this village for real. Do you know anything about them? You're saying that those people want to make us worship Oyashiro-sama like the people of Onigafuchi did. What good will that do? You know, I think it means a lot to people who really believe. But think about it, Kei-chan. Who'd be happy to live under those strict ancient rules? In this day and age, it's almost impossible to live without leaving the village. But, for example, think about Rika-chan. All the old people say she's a reincarnation of Oyashiro-sama, right? Those people might be religious fanatics and... Are you talking about old man Kimiyoshi? Well, I know he's a deeply religious man for sure, but he isn't a fanatic. Believe me, there really are people who are trying to revive the cult of Oyashiro-sama. <laughs> okay, I'll believe you for now because I want to hear the rest. Go on. They found out that the curse of Oyashiro-sama was just an endemic disease unique to this village. So now they're researching the pathogen. Where? Uh, first of all, what's an endemic disease? What's a pathogen? They sound gross. <laughs> I was getting confused. I didn't know what I was talking about myself there anymore. I was deeply influenced by Rena last night and believed everything she said. But having said it all out loud, I started realizing how impossible the story sounded. What's going on with you? Did Mio-san tell you all this? How did you know? She's infamous for this kind of thing. She's an occult maniac, so she always makes up crazy stories. A few people have gotten badly taken in by her before. She told me some of her stories once, and I remembered they were actually very interesting. <laughs> Is that true? I think you've heard about this once or twice before, 
but this village had a unique culture back in the old days. They did a lot of oppressive things, like having very strict rules, very strict punishments, and a bunch of other cruel traditions. They're well known among occult maniacs. Mio-san is one of them. So, the story I heard about the weird parasite that controls the village was... What? A parasite? Is that a new story she came up with? What do you mean, new story? I told you, Mio-san is an occult maniac. She studies the weird legends surrounding Onigafuchi, and enjoys making up hypotheses, theories, and wild stories about them. She's created a lot of different ones aside from that theory that parasites are controlling the village. One I heard an awful while back was about UFOs. That one was interesting, since it connected a lot of different dots. The story was about a UFO that crashed into Onigafuchi Swamp long ago. The alien that was in the UFO and the villagers had a battle, or something like that. It was like one of those sci-fi horror B-movies. The one Satago heard was a theory about creatures from the bottom of the ocean. A movement in the Earth's crust opened up a connection between that underwater world and Onigafuchi, and... The princess of the underworld fell in love with a young man in the village. It was like a sci-fi version of Romeo and Juliet. The story about the parasites that you heard must be a new one. I hope she makes all of them into a book one day. Mion began laughing so hard that she had to hold her stomach. As I looked at her laughing like that, I realized that I fell for something that ridiculous. At that point, it was obvious. I had been completely taken in. I'm sorry, Mion, but please answer my questions. First, do the fanatics who are trying to revive the cult of Oya Shirosama exist? No, they don't. I mean, it's totally the opposite. The three families have agreed to open Hinamizawa to outsiders in order to make this village thrive. I'm not supposed to tell anybody about this, but there's a project to build a new highway by the end of the 20th century. The Sonozaki family is promoting its construction without informing the villagers. If all goes well, this whole area will flourish. My grandma is betting she'll make a fortune when it causes land prices in the region to skyrocket. Well, most of the work will happen in the 21st century, so I'll likely end up taking over the project. So, you don't think there are people who hate outsiders? I told you, there are no such people. What makes you think that we want to make this village more inconvenient than it already is? In fact, we've already started selling the land of the village to rich people who want to build country residences here. Your house is on, on the first lot we sold, Kei-chan. <laughs> Didn't the villagers welcome you? The three families are trying to do everything they can to stop young people from leaving the village. There was nothing vague about what Mion had said. Her story makes a lot more sense than Takano-san's delusional theories. And so, Mion's words woke me up from that delusion. So, what about this? I heard that the residents of Hinamizawa have extraordinary high levels of something in their blood, and it proves that they're infected by parasites. Really? How did Mio-san figure that out? Takano-san is a nurse, I'm sure she can do that. And you think anyone would give her blood samples for no reason? Because I sure don't. Even if she could get blood samples somehow, how and where would she examine them? How many blood samples do you think she examined all by herself? Mion was right. I couldn't believe I thought Takano-san could do all that just because she was a nurse. It struck me hard to believe that she got that many blood samples and did a high-level examination like that without any help. When I thought about it rationally, I shouldn't have believed such a ridiculous story so easily. Um, I heard that people here don't get hay fever which is proof of their being infected by the parasite. Only people in cities get hay fever. I heard it had something to do with fuel emissions. Kei-chan, you're talking about Hinamizawa. I mean, even people in Okinomiya don't get hay fever, I think. But what about this? I heard that the Sonozaki family has a death squad and that they kidnapped the grandson of a government minister once. <laughs> that sounds cool, I wish I had a squad like that. Even I was sounding ridiculous, but I believed all of it last night. I believed it because Rena looked very serious. Over the phone? <laughs> oh, she looked very serious through, through the landline, yeah. It's true that the grandson of a minister was found in Takatsudo. We didn't do it. We just acted as if we did. What do you mean? Uh, please explain. Okay. Uh, the Onigafuchi Guardians protested violently during the dam conflict. They did something close to terrorism as well, but there were people who used the resistance movement for their own benefits. 
They use the name of the Onigafuchi Guardians to rob people of money and valuables. The Onigafuchi Guardians were a very aggressive force at that time. There's a high possibility that some people thought they could use the name to extort money. The kidnapping case was one of those incidents. The kidnappers thought they could stifle the police investigation by acting like they were the Onigafuchi Guardians. They kidnapped the boy to demand a ransom. To tell you the truth, the members of the Onigafuchi Guardians were all very surprised. They were actually impressed that those guys actually pulled it off. I remember they even said that they'd give them an award. Wait a second! So the Onigafuchi Guardians had nothing to do with the kidnapping? Nope. Not at all. Mion said it firmly. It was a simple and clear answer, which left no room for suspicion. And thinking about it, it's nothing surprising. Kidnapping the grandson of a minister and negotiating with him in person is a huge deal. The Onigafuchi Guardians were a very aggressive group, but this operation wasn't so easy that it could be carried out by any of the normal residents of Hinamizawa. It was obviously the work of professional criminals, without a doubt. Like I said earlier, the Sonozaki family acted as if we were the masterminds of the kidnapping case. What do you mean by that? This is a secret precept of the Sonozaki family. You can't tell anybody about this, okay? When an incident like this happens, we traditionally act as if we're responsible for it. It's a tradition of bluffing. Bluffing? Really? Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it works out in our favor. It can be a criminal incident, the weather, or even lottery numbers. We act as if it happened because the Sonozaki family wanted it to happen. It starts to sound like we're a very powerful organization, doesn't it? That's the point. This is the secret strategy that only the Sonozaki family heads know about. This strategy is meant to make us look bigger and stronger than we really are. Wow. So, what about the plan they had during the dam conflict? The one to attack the Ministry of Construction? Was that true? I heard that they obtained weapons and even trained for it. <laughs> that was the spin we put on it. There's no way we could actually carry out a crazy plan like that. Our real goal was to make people believe that we're capable of doing things like that so that we could exact pressure on the government. That's all. They obtained weapons and went through training just so they could exact pressure. They had no intention of actually carrying out the plan. The Sonozaki family was just bluffing. That made sense. Of course it did. It's impossible to attack the Ministry of Construction. Even if they did, it wouldn't solve the problem. All I had to do was use common sense. Even if they did, they would have been crushed within seconds by a huge number of policemen. Why didn't I think of that? What about the weapons and the training? As for the weapons, no comment. <laughs> but we did go through training. We needed to do that in order to make the bluff look real. We gathered some younger men from my father's office and appointed Kasai-san as a leader of the group. We went to, the, to a desert in Texas, played war games with some instructors, and went sightseeing in San Francisco afterwards. <laughs> so, so... I couldn't think of anything else. It was obvious now. I, no. Rena and I both were completely fooled by the scrapbooks of Takano-san's delusion. Rena was so serious about it, so I believed her. But if you examined it closely, there were so many inconsistencies. I couldn't believe Rena took a delusion like that so seriously. I knew the reason why, though. She was still in a state of shock after being caught with the corpses that day. She was mentally unstable. I don't know why, just, but just the idea of, like, M Mion and the others in, like, southern Texas just playing war games. <laughs> then she came across this tall tale, and she believed it. Rena is a smart girl. She wouldn't have taken it seriously if she was stable. Plus, another thing happened to wake me up from the delusion. The white van I saw yesterday came to school during the lunch break. The four men in work uniforms I saw were there too. Oh. I said thank you to Mion and followed them. The man who talked to me yesterday knocked on the door of the teacher's office. Hello, I'm from the Okanogi Gardeners. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming. It's very hot today, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> By the way, you look very beautiful today, as always. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you can start whenever you're ready. Yes, we'll start right away. My account manager told me to give this to you. 
the quote and the invoice, I see. The tape is left blank on both of them. Well, there shouldn't be any problem. Thank you so much. Alright, we'll start right away. The man was talking to Chie-sensei with a big smile. Oh, hmm? Oh, what are you doing here, Mayamara-kun? Oh, Principal. Who was that guy? The Principal pointed his finger at the window. When I looked out, I heard the noise of an engine starting. The noise was coming from the engine of a motorized lawnmower. I saw young men in work uniforms taking another lawnmower, some brooms, and a ladder out of the van. The gardeners! We haven't taken care of the grass around the fence and the trees for a long time. I wanted to clean them up before summer. Mr. Principal, thank you for giving us a call. The man noticed the principal, took off his hat, and bowed. No need! I trust your work. Please take care of things. I think we can finish it today. We might make a lot of noise, though. Each worker took one of the tools and walked towards the fence where the grass was growing. The engine of the lawnmower was very loud, and the kids who were playing in the schoolyard looked at it curiously. Hey! It's dangerous out here! Go back to your classroom! It was Chie-sensei. She handed an envelope with the documents in it to the principal. It said Okanogi Gardeners in green on the envelope. Principal, please sign the invoice and drop it off at their office next time you go to the town hall. Of course. Will do. Uh, Chie-sensei, did they come here yesterday? Yes. They came here to look at the grass late in the afternoon. They told me they got lost on the way back because they tried to take a shortcut. Hmm. This village has a lot of small roads branching off everywhere, and they can be very confusing. I remember when I first came here, Chie-sensei started talking about when she got lost, and they laughed together. There was never anything suspicious to begin with. I thought they were suspicious yesterday because of what Rena had told me. At first, I thought it wasn't unusual to see a white van. But then, right after I heard her creepy story, I saw a white van parked on the road, and I got scared. The gardeners weren't familiar with the roads of Hinamizawa, and they got lost trying to take a shortcut on their way back. That's all. I had it totally twisted around? I believe that fake-sounding story. I believe that the Sonozaki family was working behind the scenes, and I fabricated the existence of a group of fanatical believers in my mind. Worse, I doubted Mion. Damn it! I'm such a fool. She's my friend. We took each other's hands that day, saying that we were a family made of friends, and that friends were friends no matter what. I said that, but then I doubted my friend. I'm so stupid. Anyway, Rena was the problem. She also needed to wake up from this crazy delusion. I had to hurry and wake her up. Rena seemed like she had no mind to listen to anyone else. She truly believes that the Sonozaki family are the masterminds of a large-scale conspiracy. Nope. Alright, back to Rena's perspective. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's just fucking going crazy right now. Of course she is. Alright, well, I think I'm gonna end this episode here. Even though we're probably minutes away from the end of this chapter, as fucking usual with Higurashi and Umineko and even Kokonia. I did that in Kokonia a couple times. That was fucking great. <laughs> uh, even though we're probably close to the end, I'm still gonna end here because I don't know if I am. <laughs> That's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, then be sure to press the like button. And if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! Yeah.